A 22-year-old Australian student has perhaps solved a mystery that's puzzled scientists for years. During an internship at the University of Melbourne, she located an intergalactic mass that had moved to what is termed the filaments of the galaxies, which stretch across enormous expanses of space. Astrophysicists have known about the missing mass for the past two decades, but the technology required to pinpoint a location has become available only in recent years. At least that's one view. Now for another view. The country has been under siege by weather in recent years. Devastating tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, droughts have killed thousands, called billions, caused billions in damage. Uh, a lot of people want to talk about global warming. They want to talk about man-made uh, changes in our uh, environment. But according to a top government scientist, there is a far more important threat, that of solar max storms on the sun that could cripple this world's satellite communications, navigation systems, and electrical transmission equipment and grids. Here to talk about this and whether or not we are uh, living in over-dependency on electrical grids and products that could lead to calamity is Dr. Charles Liu, professor of astrophysics at Cooney College of Staten Island, associate at the Hayden Planetarium. Great to have you with us. It's a pleasure to be here. <sighs> Charles, let's start with first the, the issue of uh, the filaments uh, sure. in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. and, and this is, uh, if this is true, it is significant. That's 22 year old young lady on an internship <laughs> in Melbourne making all of you pros look like uh, you were taking it easy. Well, we're so glad that we have young people like that that are so talented. The basic point is this what she was discovering was not so much the so called cosmological dark matter that's right. not made up of protons, neutrons, electrons, but we do know that for decades now we've been trying to find the missing protons and neutrons and electrons. Real matter. Sitting, real, well, yes, what we would call luminous matter or, or the matter that we know make up the Earth. Yeah. And Us heathens would call it real matter. Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, we've thought for a long time that between galaxies, we live in the Milky Way, contains right. hundreds of billions of stars, but between us and, say, the next galaxy or the next thousands of galaxies, there may be lots of gas that's floating there that hasn't been detected. Right. And what this young lady did with her collaborators was very simply to stack up hundreds of faint images that by themselves didn't show anything but when you put them together revealed that faint bridge of material that goes literally millions of light years from one galaxy to the next to the next it's a wonderful discovery but yet it's it's far from conclusive that it's quote That's unquote right. The real deal. That's right. At this I moment, I hate to use those fancy <laughs> it's, it's those totally fine. Uh, no, you, you put it. You hit the nail on the head. It seems very convincing, but it is just one study, and it's one part of the universe. And there's a lot more left to look at. But this is really an interesting new discovery. Moving closer to home. Sure. Our sun uh, has been in solar minimum yes. uh, for some time. Historically low. And, and when we say uh, historically low, we're, we're used to having coronal ejections. We're used to seeing sunspots. Right. They've been, for a period of time, literally absent. That's right. For almost three years, ending only just recently, we were at the lowest amount of solar activity in more than seven decades. A lot of people were wondering what's going on with the sun. But the reality is, again, just like here on Earth, we have a hard time predicting hurricanes or tornadoes right. or thunderstorms even. Uh, the same is true with the sun. It's enormously more complicated, but enormously greater potential impact on Earth. Interestingly, though, the warnings from the government now are, are, are becoming uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat dire in tone. Right. Uh, and talking about the vulnerabilities of our electrical grid particularly, uh, how seriously do you take those warnings how serious are the possibilities? Well, we're not talking apocalypse, okay? Uh, well, we'll take apocalypse off. We'll, we'll do that. Gratefully so. That's right. But the reality is, just as you say, if you have a home in Florida, you've got to pay attention to hurricanes. We now are extending our civilization out into space, into low Earth orbit and beyond, so we have to pay attention to the sun. Sunspots, when they are most powerful, can actually produce these storms on the surface which are larger than the planet Earth itself. When they eject matter, they can sometimes eject with the energy equivalent to millions of atomic bombs. And when this hits, Earth. And this hits the Earth's magnetosphere, that's right. Our atmosphere, 
we have a potential of shorting out electrical circuits that are very large, especially in the polar regions. We have the potential for losing satellite communications. We have the potential for all kinds of telecom telecommunications issues. Uh, the infrastructural damage, the economic damage could be immense. Immense? Could it also be lasting? I would say that without the proper preparation, we could easily lose our ability to communicate worldwide, the things that we're so used to, for periods of days, weeks, possibly even to months in some of the more remote locations. And we know that in the 2012 budget, the Obama administration has put forward something like a quarter of a billion dollars mm -hmm. for uh, a smart grid, yes. uh, which is about a 38, 40 percent improvement over the previous year. Literally nothing has been done to this point. If we can get those preparations done for things like solar storms into that grid, it would save us a lot of headache. If These storms will come with what's called solar max. When is solar max? Because we've gone through a period of r remarkable, That's right. even historic uh, inactivity. That's right. The current prediction is about May 2013 when solar max will come. That's when most of the storms will be most powerful. But big storms can come at any time. Again, I'll use the hurricane analogy. Yeah. Even if you don't have a busy hurricane season or you're off season slightly, a big storm can come and cause a lot of trouble. All right. Professor Charles Liu, always great to see you. Thanks always for being with us. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Luke.